Welcome to, to Mind Academy Sports, where we help athletes learn the connection between their mind and performance. In this video, I kind of just want to let people know what we do and how we can help athletes uh, play better. So, you know, people come to me uh, for different reasons, maybe after injury, maybe uh, they have like, sometimes people even have anger problems and stuff like that. But if we're talking about simply from a mental performance, standpoint how can we help okay so so here's what it is we help athletes destroy fear that's pretty much what it is so this is the equation that we work out of performance equals potential minus the interference so every athlete has an extreme level of potential right uh, we feel this all the time, okay? And we know that we have potential. We know how great we can play. We've been in those flow states before. We've been in those games where we have felt like ourselves and very confident. The problem is these situations are fleeting and they're elusive, right? We, you know, we may pop in, you know, get into these, get into our rhythm, maybe second quarter, maybe third quarter. Maybe we won't see it for three games. And what is stopping us from reaching our true potential, right? So I started this company because I just started looking over my athletic career and even when I was a little kid and stuff like that, what is responsible for, for a zone? What's responsible for a flow state? And what I want to tell many people here is you have the potential of you know, when we see Klay Thompson go for 60 points and 11 dribbles, and we see Steph Curry do all this stuff, and we see, you know, different players in the zone, you have that type of ability. You have practice. You have put in hours of work, right? It's, this greatness is only inside of us, and what it is is this limitless potential. It's like if you ever seen that limitless movie, that's the type of potential that you have. The problem is... This interference that starts to click on during the game, it gets in the way. You feel what I'm saying? And it's a form of fear, right? So it's like, you ever notice, you can be as confident as you want to be before the game. You know, you can put on your headphones or whatever. But when that whistle blows and that ball goes up or whatever your sport is, whatever's on going on, whatever is real, on the inside of you that's what's going to come out you can't fake anything all right so what's stopping us from playing to our potential every time when you think about the mind you have to understand that it's perfect it's like a computer right so it's responsible for my heart beating my eyes dilating right I, it never says oh i'm just gonna miss a beat today or um, maybe I won't, the blood won't circulate today. No, that's not how it works. It's very consistent. Okay. So if you learn to put good things in as far as confidence, um, fearlessness, uh, domination, dominating the game, if you put these thoughts inside of your mind, then it will automatically cause you to play better. Uh, it's not something that you have to force. Your body will just do it. But what is keeping our potential? Why, what is keeping us from playing to our potential uh, every single time? And it's what we call the interference. And interference screws with people because it, it may be a confusing word. And it just means that there is a disconnect between what you really want inside of your mind and what actually happens inside of your body. It's an interfering type of situation. Just like if I were to have a water hose and it's going out at full force and full capacity and I would put, pinch the water hose and now it's only coming out in drips. And that's how even professional athletes, you know, even professional athletes sometimes get into a place where they're not operating in their full power and capabilities. So interference is, a, is, is kind of a weird word and 90% of interference anyway is fear. 
So, you know, I, I played football, okay? I'm only five foot six. I played at 182 pounds, okay? So I played people who are way bigger than me. Uh, and football players and basketball players typically are not afraid of anybody. So it's not like this fear is coming from a place where you are afraid of people. But this fear is underlying. These thoughts are coming from your subconscious, which means you are not conscious of these thoughts. These, your, your unconscious, the percentage of your unconscious is 93 to 95%, which means that 93 to 95% of the thoughts that is flowing through you the entire time, you have no idea the thoughts that you're thinking. The only, the only way you'll know is how you feel or something like that. But you don't know these thoughts. You just know the thoughts that come through your mind, right? And to you, you don't fear anything. But what I'm trying to tell you is no matter what level you're on, professional all the way down, athletes, 99.9% uh, .9 of athletes play with fear, okay? So there's different types of fear that we try to figure out what's going on. So there could be fear of failure, which means you can have some things at stake and you don't want to fail. There could be a coach in your ear. I don't know what it is that, that can trigger this fear of failure, but what you'll try to do is you'll try to do everything perfectly and you'll try not to mess up. So you'll try to over control your movements. You just try to do whatever you can not to mess up. And this, stif um, this stops the creativity, it stops the instinctiveness, and yes, it can cause a kink in the holes. Uh, and I may get into that later, but that's a quick, a little quick reason. Fear of success. Fear of success, there is a uh, limit that we have placed or belief that we feel how good that we can play, right? So. Let's say, um, as a running back, because I play running back, let's say my natural ability or what I do is I score two touchdowns per game. That's what I do. Um, that's, 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 that's not a good example. Okay, so what fear of success is, is you have a certain uh, threshold of how good you think that you should be doing. So if you get over that threshold, Something inside you say, hold on, we're doing a little bit too well. Okay, we, this is our line here. Why are we performing up here? So it will take you back down so that you will not experience success. There, I don't know what the reasons are for particular people. That's why everything has to be one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know what the reasons are, but I know fear of success causes people to go back down. Got it? Then we have limiting beliefs, all right? So limiting beliefs is basically you can accomplish something, you're well, you're well uh, capable, but you have a limiting belief, all right? So you have a limiting belief, for example, um, if you have some, okay, so remember all these things are subconscious, all right? But limiting beliefs are kind of like uh, let's say um, I was playing running back, right? And I had, and I ran people over. I was, you know, I was, I did that. I was very good at being physical as a running back. But I thought when I came out, I'm like, dude, Ray Lewis is actually playing. So, do I believe that I can beat? If, if me and Ray Lewis was in a hole, how much do I believe? that I can actually hold my own or run through him. Probably it's not very smart, but I'm just using that as an example. They're probably, regardless of me and him colliding, there is probably limiting beliefs because I have seen him destroy people, tear collarbones off and all this other stuff. I've seen it. So inside of my mind, there is a limiting belief that I probably have to deal with in order for me to be successful against him. And what I'm trying to tell you as an athlete, when you drop into the moment, you have to be careful because the people that you are playing against, you have beliefs about them and they may not be conscious. You may think 
that you can't win. There may be teams that in your subconscious, in the truth of who you are, you don't believe you can beat that team. So guess what? You're not. So these are the forms of fear that stops athletes. Okay. Next time we'll get into how fast uh, this stuff works. Does it take a day? Does it take three days? Does it take a couple of sessions? Does it take months? How fast does this work? All right, guys, I, I appreciate you guys paying attention. And I, I just want you to remember that you are only one thought away from your next greatest performance.